Thursday. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. What's going on, guys? What's going on? Oh, man. How's, it, how's your good. weekend? <laughs> good to see you, boys. Yeah, it's been a good week. We are a one man down, um, hopefully to make it by the end of the show. Fingers crossed. Uh, had prior commitments tonight that were quite important. So, um, Sean, hopefully, will be with us. But uh, if not, I think we got. I think we got it covered. Yeah, interesting got it. show tonight. I think uh, we got some things to talk about. We've got Locke Lomond here that um, uh, I'm drinking right now that we reviewed this week as well. Um, and I think Mark, you put together a little something, something here in the front that we all have a little blind tasting. So, should be interesting show. Something a little I'm guessing, I'm guessing sherried, but I don't know. Uh, maybe. We'll see. We'll, we'll get into it. But um, we've got a good topic, and uh, I'm anxious to talk about the, the review you guys did because it was a, a, a different type of review for us, right? It was a live review that you guys did on Monday. So that was kind of fun. I mm -hmm. jumped in the chat and had a little fun with everybody. But um, i really interested uh, to talk about it since I didn't really get a chance to be a part of it. But um, Let's see who we got online real quick and, and sure. see what's going on. We got people are jumping in here, and it's good to see everybody. Uh, I see Rob right off the bat, Whiskey in the Six. What's going on up Canada, my friend? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scroll up top and start showing some comments. So this is a good one right here to start us off with. World of Warcraft. <laughs> of course he's playing World of Warcraft. Look at this yeah. guy, Gerben. Gerben good to see everybody. Yep, yep. Yeah. Nurse Dave is on. Good old Ken from Scotch Down Under. Yeah, it's kind of, uh, yeah, here, let's do this one. He, he's like, oh, yeah, it's uh, it's really hot down here. Yeah, it was like 30 um, degrees today. It was 26. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Steve Rogers, Cameron, who else? Bob H. Bobby. Raymond, Everwind. Zach. Zach uh, Claude is everyone. in. I see patron. a lot of folks that were in the pre-show. Hell yeah, sure. yeah. Alejandro. Hi, everyone. Yeah. So this is what I love about this. Is actually, one of the best things I love about Scotch for Dummies is all the people that, that join online um, and can join us, you know, whether they're patrons or not. It does these oh. um, these events allow us to come on. Welcome, Weston. Weston. Welcome Thanks to the show. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate yeah, it. I mean, it, it went your, to, to your point, Andrew, you know, we've got people from Amsterdam and Australia, uh, you know, and, and everywhere in between. And it's uh, it's such a cool thing to have a small community that's spread out so far amongst the globe. It's, it's neat. So lots of good people. Um, let's talk about this this review that you guys did. Uh, I obviously yep. didn't uh, partake in it, which would have been a waste because I wouldn't have been able to taste it anyway. But what did you guys think of this? Well, I mean, it, now that you've reviewed it and you've sat on it for a week, you know, are you glad to have it on your bar, Drew? Go ahead. Oh, you want me to go first? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think I think for what you're getting out of a, what do we say, 40, 40 bucks, something like 37, that? 37, I thought. Yeah. yeah I mean, 37 is what I paid for. It. Uh, a 12 year old bottle. I mean, I'm, I'm drinking it right now. And um, the only thing I will say is got a little bit of bitterness to it that's not exactly. Is pleasing to me, but other than that, it's really nice. It's got a nice wood influence to it. It's got a nice, you know, salty brininess to it. Kind of an everyday drinker, maltiness. I mean, it's and it's a twelve year for for thirty seven dollars. I mean, yeah, go go find another twelve year old for thirty seven dollars somewhere. What's the what's the maturation or, or finish on that? Well, that's actually an interesting uh, question you had there because. Um, we pulled it up on, on the site. We've actually had quite a few comments this week mm -hmm. on this box, believe it or not. Um, and I, one of the things was, uh, what, what was it? Re, recharred was the word, I think. Well, recharged. The, the Lac Le Mans website says recharged. Yeah. Recharged. Recharged. It, it's yeah. not a common term ever used. Most likely they mean recharged casks. So they've got bourbon casks. they got for, uh, first fill, <coughs> refill, and recharged casks. So um, the one thing that uh, Lock Le Mans has is they've got their own cooper, or, or own cooperage, and they've got yeah. like 12 guys that are rebuilding casks, recharring them, you know, pr fixing them, doing all that kind of work. So they've got the the people to rechar casks and to re you know rejuvenate them to give them that fresher, more powerful uh, cask influence. And I think that's what they mean. 
when they talk about these these barrels that have been refreshed and rebuilt and, and redone. Well, they, interesting. There was a little bit of um, comment, some comment war going on there, and we've had a guy that actually emailed the distillery and talked to him about that because, you know, we got wow. kind of – people kind of call us out. It was like it's recharged, not recharged. And we're like, well, but it says recharge on this and on the website, but yeah. I agree. What What's recharged? Charged. And so apparently uh, it means the same thing. Some expressions have recharged um, as it was, it was thought. It would be easier to translate to languages, but it's technically recharged. So okay. it is recharged. Okay. So we so get it, some answers from that. Thanks so for your really, comment. Yeah. Interestingly enough, though, I'm hearing that they have their own cooperage on site. I, I would really, really be interested to talk to them and interview them uh, from because that's a that's a topic we've not yet really dove into and had somebody with some serious experience and, and expertise you know, and it would be fun to find out just what they do I'm, I'm very curious to know the cost of it is there a cost savings to having your own cooperage on site or not i mean they have to pay those 12 people a salary right so is it cheaper yes, to pay 12 guys to do this or is it cheaper to just go buy casks from somebody else i don't know it'd be really interesting i know it probably gives them some flexibility it's a good question what they, it does so, so Lac Lamont, they, they do, they're a huge volume distillery. I mean, they, they distill not just for their, their single malts, they do lots of blends and grains and things as well. So it, in a way it would benefit them if they can get barrels, broken down barrels from the U S and rebuild them in Scotland, because it costs a fortune to have a full barrel scent. But if you take it out, take it out of its rings, collapse it down and then rebuild them in Scotland, it saves a ton on shipping. Yeah, I, I would say that's probably the big value right there is just the, the, the maintenance, the care and feeding of those barrels. I mean, that's not cheap, yeah. right? And and I know that you they technically all these different distilleries have little things they do to make their barrels unique or whatever, but having a cooperage there, I imagine would be even more innovative and find ways to save cost. I mean, if you're doing thousands of barrels a year, I can't believe it's not cheaper to have your own guys on staff to do that. Yeah. So 100% pure. pure mustard. I, You know what? I can't say that I can confirm this comment, but I believe it. Um, and I do know they do have, you know, special labeled U.S. open bottles. So I, yes, you know, I think they actually do open bottles, too, for the British Open. Um, I'm, I swear I've seen one, but maybe I'm confusing it with the U.S. open version. But uh Hey, I see something from Zach Andrews. Did that come across? I missed that. Now I just saw it too. A little uh, super chat. Oh, so cheers. Zach. There it is. Cheers, oh, Zach. Thanks, Thanks brother. Zach. Much appreciated, my friend. That is the remnants of my uh, Lac Lamont. So I may have to move to something else here in a little bit. I, it's a good scotch, guys. For, for $37, 12 year old, I mean, I, I would be happy to put this up in my game room and, and go pour it and, and not worry about it. I even think about it um, all day long. It's good. It, it definitely well, thumbs up for, for me. This would be a great bottle to introduce somebody to scotch with. Ha, ha, ha. I see what you're doing there, Andrew. Nice segue there. So what, <laughs> what is the topic for tonight's shows, Andrew, since you're segueing? So – since I've been in Scotch, um, there have been lots of people that have been interested in Scotch. And they say, so how do I get into it? What do I do? So what we've done tonight is we've kind of put together, an, uh, I wouldn't say an itinerary, but kind of a plan on how you would bring somebody into the Scotch fold and, and what you do to kind of not overwhelm them, but to understand what they would get from Scotch. Because there's some people that, are, you know, they're a, they're a Zima drinker. They, they drink white wine only. And getting them into scotch is a much different process than getting into a heavy bourbon drinker because yeah. they're used to drinking, you know, 40, 46% ABV, you know, neat. It's a different experience. Right. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to kind of talk through that process of how do you get somebody into scotch or if they're interested in exploring that, how do you start that process? If they stop at bottle two, that's fine. But so we're taking this from the, the standpoint of someone that's already kind of in the scotch and wanting to have someone else come join them or go down the journey with them. Yes. Right. But that person, I mean, that, that that's interested could have 
zero experience with whiskey altogether. Maybe they're just flat out beer drinker or mixed drink or, or something of that nature. Um, maybe they're already on the bourbon side of the house and they want to, you know, cross over into the scotch and, and explore that. But yeah, I, I think you approach it the same way, regardless of who you're approaching right. it with. I think you still have to go through the same process, just maybe a little faster or slower, depending on your experience. Right. right. That's what I would recommend as well. Yeah. I think it's probably safe to say too, that, what we're going to talk about tonight really can kind of fall into really any kind of category, whether it's scotch or it's tequila or rum or even beer. Right. I mean, it's kind of the same kind of process, really. I would think. Yes, I agree. So listen up, Zach Myers, this one's for you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Zach, you're, you're definitely exactly who we're talking about, Zach. (laughs) <laughs> um, so, so what's the first category, Andrew? What, what do, how do we want to get people? And, and so the, the first part of getting getting up, if a person comes up to you asking <laughs> about scotch or or you you have somebody that you know that may be interested, the first thing you need to do, number one, and I wish you had graphics for this, is number one, you have to understand them. So the first thing I do when I'm bringing somebody into the exploration of, of whiskey like this is, number one, I have two main questions. How do you drink your coffee? or tea, depending on what they do, and how do you drink your beer? Um, and maybe a third question is, do you drink mixed drinks or hard, or hard liquor in, at all? So, you know, if, if somebody drinks black coffee and Guinness, they are gonna be more open to those richer, bolder flavors of a sherry bomb or a peated whiskey. If they're a tea drinker that has milk in their tea and doesn't drink beer and maybe some white wine, then you have to, approach that a very different way. You start with the lower ABVs, you add water to them, you maybe you start with a, an ice ice block in there. It's just a different entry point into the scenario. And if they drink whiskey, you know, if they're a, you know, it, it, it almost doesn't matter if they're a, a regular coffee drinker with um, a wide range of beers, but they, but they do like bourbons. Well, that's a whole different aspect. They're already up to the 40% ABV whiskey and it's time to, to really expand at that point. So that's those are the first questions I have for a, a new a new whiskey drink. Uh oh, watch my yeah. mouse died. Oh, there it goes. I got no. it. Okay, <laughs> go ahead, Mark. So, you know, one of the things that that uh, and, and I, I hate to do, I don't hate to do it, but it's I, people I'm sure get put off just a, a little bit, and when they ask me. Literally, the first thing I do is is I turn it back on them when they say, "Oh man, I, I really want to try a scotch." Well, what do you recommend I try? I mean, the first thing I do is is, is answer the question with a question, and, and it's literally to to your mm-hmm. point, Andrew, is to get to know them. I'm trying to understand their palate, and maybe it's not just a drinking palate. And, you know, I ask them, "What's your favorite foods? What what kind of flavors do you like? You know, are, do do you like sweet? Do you like bitter? Do you like rich? Do you?" Um, do you like smoky things? Do you smoke cigars? I, all I want to know is I'm trying to, to get to know their palate um, because without knowing their palate, I really have no where to start on the reference point. And, and you really want to start somebody off on the right foot. You don't want to send them down a path where their first experience is horrible because they, they might not ever come back. I mean, Drew did. He came down to my house when he first got into this and he had a pretty bad experience. He went through the whole lineup and was like, I can't drink this. And but <laughs> nevertheless, he was committed to the journey. And so, um, you know, just this week at work, somebody asked me, Oh, wow, you 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 drink scotch? And you know, I, it turned into um a long conversation of me asking them questions for probably 10 or 15 minutes before I really felt comfortable making any kind of suggestion. And that's only the first step in this process, right, Andrew? That's exactly right. And and you need to understand where a new person is coming from in their alcohol, whiskey, beer journey and, and, and and walk and tip and quite honestly, in some cases you have to tiptoe in. So you don't say, Oh, you know, you start them with a Lafroy and they're like, I'm out. I'm never going to do (laughs) this. Which ironically happens all the time with scotch. We've, we've had multiple conversations. I, I, I can't tell you, I, you know, probably at least, you know, double digits conversations of people that are like, oh, I, I, I don't want scotch, man. I've had it before. It's awful. It's like, well, what did you have? Oh, I don't know. It was just stuff. It was like, you know, ashtray and cigarettes. I'm like, well, why did you start with that? Well, I don't know. I just grabbed a bottle of scotch. And it's like, well, okay, well, 
that wasn't a good choice, more than likely. I mean, that's right. something that you want to kind of ease them into. And that's probably, I know I'm probably maybe getting ahead a little bit, but some of the different areas of how you approach this journey too is also kind of important, right? So, I mean, you want to kind of get into a situation where you're not going right in. Okay, you've you've established some guidelines. You've asked some questions. You're like, okay, what do you like to eat? What's your taste buds? Are you a spicy person? You're not a spicy person. You're a salty, whatever. What you know? What kind of what kind of coffee did? What kind of alcohol do you drink? Whatever. You, you've got some ideas. Now you got to take them and say, okay, all right, let's let's figure out what kind of what kind of journey do I want to take you to? I, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten phone calls from our buddies online, especially our gamer friends, have called me and they're like, all right, Drew, I'm at a liquor store. I don't know what to get. I'm like, okay, hold on a second. Show me what you got. What are your options? Okay, now what did you like again? You, you, you're, you're a tequila drinker, okay, or you know, or you're a, you're a, a bourbon guy, but you're not used to scotch yet. Okay, let's look at this and look at the options. I'm like, okay, now I, I know because I, I have at least a good idea of kind of all the different things we've had before, so I can kind of point them in the right way. But it's really important to kind of you know help them understand what flavors to get and also budget. I mean, cause you don't want them to buy a, you know, this is a great bottle, right? This is a coffee, chocolate bomb and all kinds of stuff, but this is gonna set them back 200 bucks. So this is probably kind of down the road that you might, they may love it, but then you're, <laughs> they may run away cause it's so damn expensive. So I don't know. It's, it's one of those things where you have to kind of help them guide them on what they take, what to take. Yeah. So, I, I so 100% pure mustard put this one up as well. And, and this is something I haven't really worked through well is the the, um, the really hoppy craft beers. So I do like hoppy craft beers as well. So so this makes sense to me that you have like bitter hops and, or grapefruit hops that are it's, – it's kind of an alternate flavor. It does make sense that they would like peated whiskey. Um I hadn't really thought of that. That that's a great that's a great build on the, on this discussion. So what, the the first step that we've all kind of agreed on is is literally trying to get to know that individual's palate and and, and taste and, and likes and dislikes. That that's really step one. So right. now we've gotten past step one. What's the next thing we that you, that you suggest we do? Yeah, the ne the next process that I go through is you start the education process. So you, you bring out, you know, you, you get an idea of where to start. And then you bring out some of your entry-level whiskeys, like a Virgin Oak or a Johnny Walker Black or a Wee Beastie, if they're potentially a Some of these whiskeys that have, you know, and I see Mark's got a monkey shoulder, which is great, great entry-level whiskey. Um, there's a Buchanan there, a, a Boonhaab as well. You know, th those kind of whiskeys that are, that, are, that are fairly on the lower end, to really explore what you think their flavor is, but maybe isn't what their flavor is. And the other point is going into this education process is you have tiny, tiny little pours because you don't want to pour a two ounce pour of one whiskey the first time and they're drunk after a glass and a half. <laughs> Anything. Well, you got, you got to take it slow, Andrew. You're right. I mean, it's an education thing. I mean, like what I have here, uh, and my bar here is I've got, I feel like I, I just grabbed what I had, but it's, it's a journey through different areas of what scotch could be right Not, And I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm not going down ma major distilleries, et cetera, but just something, right. You, you can, you can go down. Um, this is probably more like that over here, but let's start, let's start like this, right. Maybe even do this. Keep kind of keeping it work. So, you know, Blends, obviously, we all know Scotch blends are like what eighty percent or something like that from export perspective. Blends are everywhere, and they're, they're a nice intro way to get into a cheap, decent Scotch. It's more grain whiskey, like this. This uh, Buchanan's is a nice blend, but you get in the Monkey Shoulder. It's more malty. You get into Naked Grouse. It's malty and sherry, and you get into the Buna over here. This twelve-year-old, right? It's a, it's more of a kind of getting into that little bit of the Isla side of the house, but it's you know. It's nice chocolate. It's sweet. It's not what you're going to get into. And then the same thing with this the Smoky Joe, right? It's kind of a, a nice way to get into Isla without going down a huge rabbit hole. And it's not that expensive. So it's a nice way to kind of talk through and educate what they are, what kind of the main things are. Obviously, there's all kinds of, you know, different areas you can go down to avenue-wise. But these are kind of the main pieces, right? And it's, it's important to kind of say, okay, what, what do you think 
you will like. Based on what I know about you now, knowing that you're a coffee drinker, you love coffee black, and you're like you're kind of a sweet tooth as well. You know, what do you do? You like do you like a hot alcohol? Do you like to have beard, cold alcohol? What do you what do you want? Like, you know, maybe you can go down the avenue and say, well, why don't we look at the price and maybe check out this twelve? Maybe it's a nice way to start off your journey and see what happens. Yeah. So. One of the things that I think when, when you say educate, and, and I, I agree with it, um, it, educate them also on how to appreciate what they're tasting. So it's, you know, you, you pour that first glass and if you've got the experience, you start calling out some of those flavor notes and some of those aromas and, and trying to help educate their palate. I mean, I, I don't know how many people I know um, have drunk scotch, uh, for instance, a, a blue label, a Johnny Walker Blue Label, and you know their description is smooth, and it's like, wow, you, you know, you, you really missed all the intricacies of that whiskey because you don't even know how to appreciate what was in that glass. Uh, no one's, no one's taught you. You, you've never been pointed out what this is or what that yeah. is or what this scent is or what this flavor is. And so, if you're there to kind of hold their hand and walk them through their first couple glasses or first couple bottles of di different flavors it really is going to help them appreciate what it is they have and whether they like it or not. Maybe they don't really care for that one. That's fine, but they can at least appreciate what's in it and move on to something and find something they do like. But right. appreciating what it is is really a, a big step. Yeah, yeah I, I would agree that, uh, that that discussion during those first tastings is really important because when you're first tasting whiskey, you don't really know what to look for. You haven't been educated. You don't know that you should see honey or vanillas or uh, cherries or chocolates. You don't know you should see that in whiskey because you've never done it. So that's right. where tasting with friends is the best way to do it. Because then you say, oh, yeah, okay, I'm getting some. Do, do, you, do you taste chocolate here? And they'll say, no, I don't get that. Or how about vanilla? Yeah, I, get, I do vanilla. And, and it's those trigger words that really make it happen. So, you know, uh, uh, burnt toast. Uh, marzipan, um, Cheerios, those kinds of things where people have a, a more common experience will say, oh, yes, that's what I was getting. I didn't realize that. And that's where it expands. And that's where we start to kind of blow up the mind of what whiskey can be. Kind of an aha moment too, right? Where you're getting right. something and you're like, I mean, we we got friends we talked to and we're like, I don't, I just don't know. I can't get anything out of this. And then you, you see them one time go, I, I got... Is Rice Krispies a smell? Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. yeah. That's great. That's great. Yeah, good. Yes. Yes. I can say that. It's okay. I'm like, yeah, it's great. You know, and and, and you get into that and then I'm like, okay, I'm, I can smell something now. It's part of it is just kind of understanding, educating, and let them kind of relax, get into what we've got. But, it, but there really is a kind of combo. I mean, you have to understand what they want to get them started. You know, hopefully they're 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 excited to get into it, but you have to kind of let them taste the whiskey, let them experience some of it to kind of understand their balance of, of price to what they might like and, and understanding kind of where they're coming from. Yeah, so I'm I'm looking at some of the comments and, and lots of people have you know ideas of what they did. Um, you know, whiskey crossing here has a great, you know, HP 12, Buna 12, Monkey Shoulder, Valvini. Uh, you know, all started me off. The, yeah, the, those are those are great entry entry whiskeys. Th those give you a, a broad range. They give you some interesting flavors, and and that's and this is where it gets interesting. So we we've hey, we've done some education. So you hopefully you've worked with the person with a few whiskeys to kind of uh, compare and contrast the whiskeys that you've had and say, yeah, do you like this? Do you like that? If not, once you've had a few whiskeys with them. That's when it gets kind of fun because you can expand or explore and expand their whiskey. So ah, explore. And that's yeah. where it's fun. So so you've done you know the HP twelve and the um, the Naked Grouse, then you give them a Glendronach fifteen or eighteen. <laughs> you're like, what? So you're what? so you're telling me you're hooking them in, you're bringing them yeah, in, so and you're like, like oh, now you, look, or you get <laughs> water into a, a an art bag or something where it's just like. Boom! Totally different, and and it 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 broadens the mind. Yeah, and that's where it gets really fun to, to be able to kind of explore that whiskey and and to to broaden your high rise. And then once you do that, once you broaden that, then you start with the blind tastings. 
Oh. And then it's all fun. But you and know, you uh, gamify it. And that's, and that's what we do right. with those blinds is we touched the lots of whiskeys. We think we've been educated. We think we know what we're doing. But when, then when you blind it, all bets are off. Right. You really find out how dumb you are. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, you know, so many people have said it and, and we are, are living proof of it that it really does help to do to go through the journey with friends with find somebody to, to share this with because yeah we get I, i'm not going to deny that there's some group think when we do reviews of course you, you're being influenced by the people that are around you but for the it, it really does help bring stuff out of you it really does help you identify things and bring flavor notes or smells or tastes that you you were stuck on and i don't know how many times we've been doing a review you guys and i'm like oh oh what is it what is it what is it oh, yeah. one of you guys will say a word and i'm like oh right right you but, know it's and, yeah it's, 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 it's <laughs> subliminal but i mean it really does kind of help you kind of and, and you we've learned from each other from that too though i mean that's sure. part of the journey too like you, you know like we've trained we've helped train our own noses in a sense to say okay what is that oh yeah that's what that is now we know we know that that's a sulfur note we know that's coming from this Part of that also goes back to the very first part of it, educational. I mean, there's there's a lot to learn. I mean, there's a lot to learn about <laughs> all kinds of things. Um, and so yeah. that's part of the process as well, is understanding what am I smelling? Well, what are you drinking? Oh, well, well that's a blend. I, I Now I know why I get the hay. Okay. Well, and, th and that's the thing. So whiskey can be expensive too. And so that's why if somebody's getting into whiskey, if you, if you have a even a moderate collection. You don't need to have a hundred bottles to be have an impressive collection. You can have half a dozen bottles and have a, have a breadth that is worth discussing. And so that's where, you know, you can tailor that person to their target and then they can start picking bottles and exploring in that region and kind of find what they like. And then, and I, and I actually kind of messed that, that up. The, 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 the third point we had was it was exploring. So that's where you kind of explore in, within your wheelhouse. You know, yeah. I like I like sherry, and so let's let's look at the sherry whiskeys, or I like I like bourbon cask whiskeys that are kind of more tame and, and subtle, and, and I'm really enjoying that. And then that that fourth step is really where you blow the blow the doors off, and you give them a peated whiskey, you know, with a little bit of sherry influence in it to kind of make the transition, or you just go ahead and go all in and get an octomore and just well, Boy. and hopefully by this stage in the game, um, they've, they've actually expanded their palate enough to where you can start giving them some higher proofed whiskeys. I mean, in the very beginning, we may have to put them on, a, on an ice ball or a little water on a 40 ABV because, I mean, I, I, there are some people out there, their first sip of whiskey might be right then and there, and 40% and is knocking them through the roof, right? Um, so... It, by the time you get to this third or fourth step that you're describing, Andrew, it's you can start exploring some of those 46, 48s, maybe get into your 50s or something, or do, go through a single cask bottle or something and, and really start showing them, you know, some of the really interesting things that scotch can be. Uh, but you definitely don't want to start them off in the deep end with, you know, the Lafroy that's the, the, the single cask Lafroy, the one that's going to, you know, kill them. Um, but I look at where we're at now and it's funny, we've, we've done the journey around Scotland, right? We've, we've gone through the regions and we've all had our loves and, and, and fallen in love with each region. Um, and then we've all started at, at the forties and we've gone up the scale to 67, 68% ABVs and, and cask strengths and loved them. And now I think for the most part, we're, we're all starting to come back down the hill and really appreciate some of those lower ABVs again for some reason. It's just, it really is a journey That's and it's, full it's circle. so fun. Yeah. yeah. Wesley makes a good comment, our, our buddy Wesley, about that part of the journey too is understanding how they like to drink it, right? Like he, he used to use an ice ball to, to cool it down. I got a, a good friend that he still would rather have it and it's not so much, I mean, it's educational because then you have to talk about water and how water affects the whiskey and then what kind of ice do you use? I'm like, he used to just put regular ice in there. I'm like, don't do that. At least put a ball so you can control it because he likes to have his whiskey cold. He didn't okay, it very hot. So I'm like, so I had to at least educate him on and say, well, well this is what happens with it. He didn't, he didn't believe me about the, 
the water and how it affects the, 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 the alcohol and what it does to the flavor, et cetera. And he's like, once I showed him that, he doesn't do ice balls anymore. Well, and, and there's there are whiskey stones and there are whiskey, you know, there are stainless steel whiskey balls and things like that that yeah. you can use as well to cool it and not dilute right. it. Whiskey, you know, the ice balls will cool it and dilute it less than like a just a regular, you know, sonic ice or something where it'll just totally dilute it. Yeah. But I, I, I think the exclamation point at the end of all these steps, if you will, is to, to start off and, and let them know that there's no wrong answers, you know. Uh, yeah. you, every, this is so subjective. You don't don't feel like you need to hold back on any comment or opinion you have on a whiskey uh, based on the company you're in. Because I mean, let's be honest, guys. We're all different. We're all going to have different likes and, and dislikes, and, and that's just the nature of it. And that's okay. Um, say whatever's on your mind. I, I, that's one of the things that really helped us out right along the bat was that. For some reason, Drew didn't have any hesitation just blurting out things that it reminded him of that you would never hear in a whiskey review. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's the key is you have you have to make it accessible. You can't be the the whiskey snob that says, "Well, you should be tasting this," and if you don't, you right. know what you're talking about. Right. That's yeah. That's I think just, that's honestly that's that's probably. I mean, we so we all. I think it's obviously we we all enjoy and love scotch, but. I think half the reason we do it is because it's it's such a cool thing to and we talk about it all the time with our patrons and, and good friends and it's like you know whiskey for sharing you you want to share the experience you want to share the education you want to share what you're tasting you want you want confirmation that yeah am i getting that rice krispie treat is it just me am i weird <laughs> i mean yeah no i got it too man you know you want that you want to kind of kind of share the experience right and you want to share what you've got and then the other thing too is you know is it's just sharing is caring all together you've got i've got tons of bottles here mark's got a few i think maybe a couple and um part of it is just kind of going through it and um just being able to say hey have you tried this have you tried this yet have you tried this this is really good right speaking so, of there uh, what do you got there let me set the stage so you guys uh knowing that uh that we're going to be separated in tonight's show like this i i put together uh, a two sample blind and these guys are pouring them out and it's not so much of a blind challenge i actually want to incorporate some of the things that we just talked about in our our main topic into this blind I won't, I'll call it a blind comparison. It's not a blind challenge because that, there's there's nothing that I'm challenging you to with with these two samples. But I, I really want you to compare them. I want you guys to walk through them um, one at a time. Give us your your nose, your palate, your observations, um, and compare and contrast the two. And then over the course of you doing this, I'll start sharing a little of information about what these samples are. And, and at the end, we'll have a little fun with it. So okay. I've given these guys two samples. Um, I think one's actually a bit darker than the other. If you that's, the, that's my right side on my right. It's a dark one. So um it really doesn't matter which one you guys start with i don't want to give you much information about them at all i want you to approach these things as if you don't know what they are because you don't and and just walk us through this i'm really anxious to get your guys's blind opinion here and then as okay. i start sharing some information about them you guys can ask questions and maybe i'll answer maybe i won't but it's it, there's not a challenge <laughs> here so so this is a good this is a good point i mean going down how you how do you uh get people into scotch or whiskey in general. I mean, this is a good way right here, just experimenting and, and understanding, let, letting, whisk, letting the, the whiskey do all the flavor and talking for you, not anything else. You may think you know it, you may already be educated, but then you're like this, you're like, just throw that stuff away because it doesn't make a difference. Right. <laughs> and then you do a blind challenge and you're like, wow, I don't know anything. <laughs> so I'm going to start with a lighter one. Are you Sorry. good? All right. So, we, we have no idea on anything. Mark for these blind. We don't know what the ABV. We don't know any of that kind of stuff. We're just going to go into them. This is where you get humble and, you, and you're and you forced to kind of expand your mind and, and, and dig into the whiskey 
without any preconceived notions. You don't know who made it. You don't know any of that kind of stuff. You just have to use your mind. That's where for a newbie, it's really hard to be able to do this. Yeah, this, this really forces you to go back in your whiskey library and think through things you've had before and what you have. And, and you know, because obviously I don't know what Mark has. I have no idea, honestly. No idea. <laughs> but, I, but I at least know things we've tried before and kind of can put them in kind of subtle categories. And the only way you're going to know that is to have experience. Oh, well, this this uh, lighter one, whichever, uh, this was the um, the non-marked one. So we, he, right. he gave us an unmarked bottle and then a bottle with a pink sticker on it. <laughs> and this is the non-marked bottle. And it smells so good. It's like gingerbread and, oh, my gosh, sweetness and cake. And um, I'm not getting, I'm not getting peed on it, but vanilla it is smells it smells warm. It smells a little hot. I would say, I mean, I haven't tasted it yet. It smells a little warm. It's a little tasty, though. But I've got like um, Christmas marshmallow chocolate, like Santa things that smell. Yeah, I mean, it, it is. It's like I'm not, there's a little bit of cinnamon in there, but man, it just it, it smells delicious. Nutmeg on the nose. I got nutmeg, spiciness, all is spice. Oily on the glass. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not not too bad, but yeah, it's oily. Legs are well, actually no, it's pretty oily. Yeah, see, I that's something that. that I've never been able to compare. Is I've never taken a a non oily whiskey and an oily whiskey and, and seen what the difference in the legs are. We probably need to work a little on that. Maybe Doctor Scott could work on that. That'd be fun. What does that mean? What does that mean when you get oily? Okay, so. Like me. It means it, uh, it has a lot to do with the mouthfeel. There's lots I mean, of oils and esters and things like that. Maybe, maybe it wasn't uh, nacho filtered. That would give it a little bit more of that in it. So it tastes almost exactly like it smells. Short finish, decent ABV, 46 ish, maybe higher. I don't know. I can't tell yet. In that range. Um, but it doesn't. It doesn't seem too hot um it's, it's fairly smooth if you will um I have a, kind of a toffiness to it on the, on the sweet side but it's nice yeah i would say the the palate isn't as good as the nose would predict to me but it is very tasty it's not as as not rich very and, complex yeah so drew you nailed the abv right on the head it's a 46. okay uh, and it is non-chill filtered. I just, one of you guys said that. Mm. Mm. It's tasty. It's meaty. Kind of gives me the impression of like a. Reminds me of a uh, blur athol. Really? Mm -hmm. See, I'm not. I'm not that kind of whiskey guy. I don't. I don't okay. have distilleries in my mind. Well, I I find it interesting because I know what Drew's been drinking lately, and he has been hitting the Blair Athol. I have a Blair Athol, and, and um, um, so I'm not surprised to hear him say that. I mean, he's been drinking a lot of Blair I Athol. Water, and I've got vanilla, much more vanilla in the nose now. I put oh, a couple drops of water on it. Yeah, nose is about the same, a little lighter. Oh, more. Oh, there's uh, citrus coming out now in the nose. I didn't have before. That's a tasty glass. I would never turn that glass away. It's not <laughs> nice. It's got it's cotton in the nose, floral. Uh, that's that's a that's remarkable what water can do, even at forty six. I mean, it's not a particularly bold whiskey. It's not like a sherry bomb or a peated whiskey of great of great power or anything like that. But it's really flavorful. It, it is a. Um, what I would call a, you know, a classic, classic scotch. I, I, I tend to like a little more peatiness on a classic, you know, just a hint of peat in there. It's, it's pretty subtle, but it it's, it's it's not a grain. I don't think it's a grain. It's, it's, it's a, it's a malt. Um, it, yeah. I think. That's, I don't, I don't grain. Um, right. Ready to move into the other one? What's that? You got to move into the other one? 
you, you can if you want to. I'm still analyzing this one for a second. Um, <laughs> Where speed's got it. It didn't have a very. Um, the finish was fairly short at first, but now it's growing. Now that it's opened up a little bit and some and some legs to it here with water, it's growing. Um, getting more of the the barrel influence, which I think is more like a European oak, maybe. Mm. That's nice. I, I like that dram. It's it's a say some of it. I'm you going to. You don't think it's ex bourbon? You think it's more of a European oak, like ex sherry? It's hard to say. Yeah, that, and that's what I. Yep. All right, let's move on. <laughs> let's compare. Compare okay. and contrast. I'm going to roll this. So, a lot of times, what I like to do is I like to roll it in the glass to get more surface area of the whiskey so I get a little better vaporization on the nose. Yeah, I did the same oh, thing. Cool. That just got to me that. I kind of roll it on here just to kind of coat the glass to kind of help make sure there's nothing else in the glass pre previously. Well, not the sherry bomb. That's that's Oloroso, I think. It's, it's, this was higher ABV in the nose. I, I can't get it through right now. It's it's too it's too strong. Mm. Definitely sherry, old sherry, leather. Those kind of things on there. Yeah, the nose is a little bit overpowering. Definitely leather. Not that it's bad. Mm. I can't tell. It's it's got sherry influence, but I can't tell. It's cinnamon apples on the nose. I think I'm like like fifty ABV right now, but I can't tell. Above that, definitely mm -hmm. above 50 ABV. Oh man, yeah, it just coats your tongue. You gotta, you gotta check the legs on this. Um, wow, that's that. interesting, and that's tasty. It's very well rounded, semi sweet up front. For this is a first taste, semi sweet up front rolls and a nice, nice semi tone sherry. It's definitely caramelization, more. apples, hints of red apple, just not much. Um, decent finish, nothing mm -hmm. major on the finish, but decent finish. That's, that's good. I don't, I can't tell the sheriness though. If a little it, bit of wheat bread on the nose, wheat bread, I don't know, the biscuits or how you would call it. So I don't think it's as high as I thought it was in ABV. What did you say it was? I thought on the nose, I thought it was closer to 50, but not anymore. Not that okay. I've had it in the palate. It's higher than 50, I think. No. Yeah. I think it's 46 <laughs> as well. I'm going to go 55 or 56 maybe. If it's and higher than that, it doesn't taste hot. I would say uh, – don't uh, don't catch yourself down in contestants row and the price is right against Drew, Andrew. <laughs> well, it's got a lot more heat on it than I was expecting. It's a 46.3. That's not right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what you think, it's not right. He said that is not right. <laughs> to hell with that lady. Yeah, it's wrong. Well, it, it, it has a lot more burn to it than the other one does for sure. It's got more toffee notes now with the water. Um, Definitely. I would say it's got more sherryness now than I had before with the water. That's just the alcohol kind of helping dissipate with the water. So I'm getting in there more. Oh, there's a uh, sponge cake, like uh, yellow cake. In there, a hint of that. <laughs> it definitely the water sweetened it up. I would agree with you on that. I'm getting more. I would get more cake out of it at this point. Um, I'm not getting as much leather, but the Oloroso 
And maybe we'll get a little more barrel influence now with the vanillas. That's what's pulling the that sponge cake up. Definitely vanilla now. The it's a, it's a stronger sherry influence now that it was before with the water on the palate. Longer finish now. Um, maltier. Um, something else there. Maybe a hint of chocolate. Um, this could be. 46.3 is a pretty specific ABV, so. <laughs> <laughs> Decent 20, maybe? No, decent no, 20. I would know that. I would know that in a heartbeat. <laughs> That's you couldn't cool. pass that one up on me. So I'm I don't back. know what this is, man. This is, this is like I'm, things of Buna Hobbin are coming in my head. Things of um, – um, Okay. Experience. Um, I, I, things of Glengoyne. Things of Glendronic. So – I can tell you that the first one, I don't know the maturation. I've tried to find it. I, 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 I can't find it listed. It's not on the label or anything. The second one, the maturation is exclusive X Sherry, uh, according to the label. Um, the age on both of them, you guys got a clue? Or do these taste young, old, somewhere in between? What do you, what do you think? They don't taste old. They taste... They taste um... They taste young. They don't taste like non. They taste like taste like non-age statements. They don't taste like they're very established. I don't. I don't have any mustiness out of them. I don't have anything that. And and, and that's a hard question to really ask answer because sure. how do you define age on some of these things? We've gone down that gambit before <laughs> of saying non-age statement versus age. I don't know about that, but but they don't. They taste younger in in from what I experienced before. So let me uh, ask you this. Comparing the two, okay, you guys have spent considerable time on each glass. Are there notes that you catch in both of them? Is there anything similar amongst the two, or are these exact opposites? Are they too far apart to, to be related? The, the sherry well, can be the same distillery point. for all I know. I mean, they have they're, they're, they do kind of have a same kind of characteristic, um, but but they're different flavors. I mean, well, the maturation is different. We know that for sure on the, the exclusive sherry on the second one, especially with the color. Yeah, I, I think the sherry influence on the second one is kind of overpowering the other one. So I went back to the first one. I'm getting a lot more apple in it, which I didn't get before. But when you when you contrast it to the sherry, it, it, it comes up more. <laughs> um, so I can't. Again, I'm a dummy. Okay. So that we'll, we'll, we'll knock we'll knock Drew down a little bit on the age. Um, they uh, Wesley made a comment up here. I, I have to kind of show it. They taste young is hilarious phrase out of context, right? So, so the first one, the first one's 24 years old, uh, and the second one is 18. I was gonna say this is 18. That's my first guess. This one. This one had um, tasted. They both tasted young. As far I couldn't really tell you. I just that's a hard question. Right. To me. But but this one, I I feel like this one has more subtle complexiness to like a like a Johnny Walker Blue. It's it's got very subtle notes in there. I really like this first one. The second one here feels like a Buna eighteen in that kind of context of what I know from its experience. But um, it it doesn't. I couldn't tell you the age. There's no I. Well, so I, I will say that, you know, it's hindsight. You, you said they're 1824. I felt that they were older than that, you know, or not older than 18, but more than like eight or 12 year old because they didn't have any harshness. Their edges were rounded, well rounded over. Okay. It, it didn't have like that new make um, kind of astringent quality to it. But again, I'm not good at telling you of, is that old. It didn't have typical qualities of them, but you know, um, uh, uh, Johnny or Dalmore King Alexander the third is a nine H statement, but it doesn't have any of that astringent quality as well. So I can't, I can't tell right. you that's all old. Yeah. You so, can't really get in there. I mean, some of this stuff is just so like, yeah, 
you just have to be honest and say what you get. Yeah. I mean, it, you can play. This is where it gets hard on blinds because you take that part we discussed earlier about introducing the whiskey or you know, scotch and, and education and knowing what you have. You almost have to take some of that with a grain of salt and say and piece it a little bit to kind of help you out. But other, other than that, you have to almost ignore it because just say what you got. I mean, be honest and, and say what it is. And, and you might get lucky because it's 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 really hard to say whether something's a non age statement or a 12 year in some of these. Sure. I will tell you this. Y you nailed the 18, the Booney 18. This is Booney 18? It is. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's tough. You know, Andrew, you, you had made a comment earlier about Deanston 20. I was like, there's no way I'm putting a Deanston 20 in front of Drew. Right? <laughs> like, but I should have known better with Buna Haben 18 as well. Now, the interesting thing is, is the other one is a Buna Haben as well. It's mm -hmm. a, it's a, not, it's a, um, it's an independent bottling of Buna Haben. And it's a 24 year old bottled by Whiskies of Scotland. Um, completely different, you know, different looking bottle. ABV? Wow. So this is 46 ABV. It's hard to, to, to see the actual label with the light, but um, it's a Bunahaven 1989, 24 year old, 46%. And then obviously, you know, the one with the, the pink sticker is your Bunahaven 18. I, what I wanted to do when I said compare, there's a blind comparison because these are these are two whiskeys that were laid down at the same distillery. You know, it's the same distillate. Um, and they're fairly similar in age. I mean, yeah, they're six years apart, but the only thing that really sets them apart is one is a distillery bottling and the other is an independent bottling and the maturation. I really just couldn't find anything to maturate on this independent. So I, I agree with you, Andrew, the shariness of the 18 was going to overpower and, and mask some of that distillate flavoring that I wanted to see if you guys could pull out and say, you know what? They're related. They're siblings. I can tell you that much. I, um, I can tell you when I, I, I felt pretty, pretty good about the Buna, at least my, my thought process on this one. And when you asked if they're similar, I would not have been shocked because of that. I mean, just because I've had different this different independent bottlers than before and it's like it, it's a great actually way to get into independent bottlers because when you have something that's created by the distillery and then you give it to an independent bottler they take it and they can do other things to it right it, sometimes you get I, I mean sometimes it's hard to get those subtle notes for what it is but i mean it doesn't shock me at all to know that this is a muna as well it really doesn't because that's what independent bottlers do. They make something out of something they're used to, really cool and creative. See, so, that's, that's what's so interesting here is, you know, I'm, I'm trying. Okay, so if I if I take my um, the 24 year old and and nose it and, and get that that nose profile, and then go into the uh, the 18, it, it it gets completely overpowered by the sherry. So that tells me that the sherry cask phenomena there's they do it for a reason you get a different flavor profile very quickly now this is 18 year old but you get a, a much much more powerful um flavor profile coming in and i can't pull any of that apple and things out into that sherry one just because the sherry overpowers it yeah sure now interestingly enough i i don't even know does anybody know a price point on buna 18 right now uh yeah, it's like a uh, hundred and hundred bucks, I think, something like that. No, it's more than that. One hundred twenty, maybe. Oh, oh got it. I got it right. I got it anywhere from one fifty-seven to oh. one seventy. Wow. So, okay. Yeah, interestingly enough, this independent bottling bottle that's six years older is anyways about ten to twenty dollars cheaper than that. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, we'll these people are saying. Independent bottlings, but um, there, there's no like. Alejandro asked a question about: Are there anything? Is there anything close? Andrew, would you say is there anything? I'm, I couldn't to taste find that. I'm having a hard time finding a common a common denominator across them. I. It's not like I mean. No, there there really isn't. I mean, they're. I find they're that different. Strange. So I, you know, I've been sitting on this this whiskeys of Scotland bottling uh, for a long time, and so 
I'm dying to try it. Obviously, I'm not going to try it tonight because I'm not going to waste it. But I, I'm excited after I heard you guys, you know, walk through it. I'm like, damn it. It sounds like it's going to be pretty good. <laughs> mm. um, so that's Maybe. cool. But it, it was more of a, an experiment in trying to find commonality. And Aleandra really asked the question that I wanted answered. I, I got to tell you, I'm a little bit disappointed that there isn't, that there wasn't, you guys weren't able to find that common ground on it. But I do agree, Andrew, and I, I understand that, you know, especially when it comes to sherry, fully sherry match, matured whiskey, that it's easy to mask, mask some of that new make, some of that distillery flavoring. I, I mean, think, 18 years is a long time in a sherry cask. Yeah, I think if you're going to find, I mean, if if you're if you're that good and you can find something from Bunahaven 18 and, and whatever this 24 year old whoever their bottler was and you can find those subtle notes I mean you're you're no dummy you're you really are good at dice it's like you know I do music all the time and when I, you know I listen to music you know you you make fun of me because I I don't know any words of music I can't listen to words but I hear all the instruments like a composer I can hear everything going on. And that's what, when you taste whiskeys, it's like you pinpoint all those little subtleties that I, I can't do that well. I, I, I'm decent at, at memory, memory tasting, et cetera. But some of those guys that have that tongue palate, they can get in there in their nose and they can taste like all kinds of nuances that they can say, this is the same distillery. I mean, I, I couldn't imagine doing that with these two. There's no, no way. It, the, oh, only, wow. the only common area I found on these it's kind of in the in the mid to late palate. So once the sherry is, is kind of burned, the sweetness of the sherry is burned off, and before the chocolate has come up, there's a little bit of commonality there. But it may be just because I'm looking for it. it yeah, but you're right. right. There's, there's no way you would have pulled it out. Right. Um, you're no. we are we are above average smeller tasters in that sense. This is like pro tasting to be able to get to that kind of price yeah. like. But this it was a really interesting project. That's I mean, cool. I liked it. It was cool. Uh, yeah. So I would say, boy, I don't know. I mean, the the twenty four year old is definitely a better summer dram. This it's light and fresh and and you know apple and things like that. Whereas the Boone eighteen is kind of a meteor, darker winter 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 dram. So I'm on. I can tell you, I'm probably on my own island. I'm not. I'm. I like the eighteen Boone eighteen. I don't get me wrong. I'm gonna drink it, but I won't buy it by the bottle. You now this. I'd buy a bottle of this any day. I really enjoy this bottle. Ha, ah, shit. It is, it is tasty. I would say that that it's unique. It, it's unique to, uh, um, it's just, it's great. I mean, it's a great, great glass. Yeah, I really like it. I'm just into that kind of flavor profile right now. It's really good. So, so all right, guys. We're coming to the top of the hour, and and I want to, what, what's on the, uh, what's on the forecast, Drew, for Scotch for Dummies? Obviously, we got reviews that we probably need to get together and do, which will be challenging for us, because I'm going to have to rate everything a zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to, I mean, unfortunately, it is what it is. Yeah, right? part, part of the process of all of us eventually getting it, or somewhat, but uh, I think we're going to continue doing this series. We're going to try and be educational as much as possible. We've got a Glenn Livet for Dummies coming out. Sean's going to be filming that over here next week, I think. Ah, um, we got our Scotch stuff coming back up again. We're going to do some more of those shows. We've got some good good reviews coming, um, although it's going to be one of those where it's probably going to be either be me, Andrew, and Sean here or remotely, or at least yeah. hopefully, Mark, you can come back to the, the taste world soon and you can get on that uh, road with us. But we're going to continue doing some of this stuff, and we've got yeah. some uh, – uh, we've got our Patreon um, Secret Santa swap call coming up as well. So that's going to be something that we're going to be doing. Yep. Yeah, I hope everybody's getting through them. I actually reached out to the individual that sent me my samples, uh, Mr. George Cap, and I told him that I'm not able to get through his samples right now. I'm not going to waste yeah. them. I know that yeah, I'm a lot time. of effort. And so um, I'm, I'm probably going to have to kick my can down the road for a couple weeks, hopefully less than more. But um, that's all right. I, I'm looking forward to that call. It's always a fun call to hear both sides of the swap story, right? So, and that's that's fun and exciting. And you reminded me of Sean's um, uh, Glenn Livet for Dummies, and I'm I'm super stoked about that. Those are always fun fun videos that have a ton of information, and they uh they they are they're always well received. So, yep. Um, and we got the Patreon after party coming up. So Zach just posted it. So if you're a patron, make sure you go check it out. We're gonna join that here in just a second. But the, the the four dummies stuff. I mean, we we are. Um, I'll just add this last thing: is we're we're 
we're taking more of our different educational approach too. We're doing more of those. So we're going to be doing, doing more for dummies things. And to add, um, just to give you a little bit of expertise here, I've been talking to Jason at the Mash and Drum, and we're working on something special with him as well. We're going to be doing a new series. Uh, we're still working on the bugs and kinks, et cetera, but bourbon for dummies is coming. It's coming to you. So, so how, does you it, you are super yeah. excited. how does a scotch drinker become a bourbon drinker? Well, we're gonna find out. I don't <laughs> want to know. know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you guys on the after show. We appreciate you guys. Uh, everyone have a great week, and we'll talk to you soon. It's great seeing everybody. Cheers.